this YouTube channel, Mr. Leak Science, right, is all about, uh, you know, it sounds a bit silly, really, how to smash your AQA Science GCSE. And what I'm trying to do is I'm literally just trying to do that. I want as many people as possible to do well in science. And what I've done is I've put on here, um, on this YouTube channel, 25 years of experience. And obviously you can't put it all in, you can't do every single lesson, right? But the way that I think about the teaching of science, I think makes a massive difference. Um, that's my YouTube channel. What I'd like you to do is go and find it, go and subscribe to it, right? And ultimately it will help you. Uh, there's 10 sort of main key concepts that I wanna go through. How to revise. Now I haven't put stuff on this video about that, but what I have done is I've put um, another YouTube video, another video on there that kind of goes through all the different processes that you need to do um, to revise, because revising is boring, you know, and it's just not the most exciting thing, but what you've got to do, you've got to do it. I'm going to talk a process called reverse the classroom. I'm going to talk about constant recap. I'm going to talk about required practicals, knowledge tests, keyword tests, mind maps, skills, exam, key, uh, exam question decoding, and above and beyond. So firstly, reverse the classroom. Now, what I've got on the YouTube channel is lots and lots of videos that talk about all the bits of information that you need to know before you do the unit itself. Now, the idea of that then is, now, if you've already got an understanding of the unit before you actually start getting taught it in class, it's going to be clearer to you when you actually do the actual lesson itself. So at the end of each video, what there is, there's five questions based on the video that you then just need to write down. OK, uh, it's a bit like if you were going to start playing netball, you wouldn't go and start playing netball and just kind of turn up on the first day. You'd probably do a little bit of research on it. You'd look at the rules, right? You'd look at maybe what the different symbols are on all the different vests, right? That is then kind of the same sort of thing where you've got a bit of knowledge before everything starts. Constant recap. Right, I, I'm a firm believer of, right, I'll just keep on asking questions all the time. Um, all the different processes, every sort of topic that you've done all the way through year seven, eight, nine, ten, right, and even at the start of year 11, you just got to keep on asking yourself questions all the time. Go back through your revision guides, just keep on, repeat, 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 and the more times you repeat, the more times you're going to remember it, the more you're going to understand it. The required practicals, right, now I'm just going to put down here vital. Now, I don't know what the exact percentage is, but I would probably say that half of the required practicals are going to be on your exams, right? And a good significant percentage of your actual exam is going to be based on them. And on the YouTube channel, what there is, is there's all the required practicals. All right. And what it does, it goes through the method, it goes through the apparatus, the variables, what you actually do, your results, calculations. Right? And if you can understand every single one of them in depth, then your exam is going to be easier. Knowledge. Now, understanding is one thing, right? Knowledge is another. You've got to be able to acknowledge, you've got to know to the facts, right? So for here, what I've got is I've got a question. It's just one individual question. Question number 12, what is anaerobic respiration? And what I've got is got a word document, a word line and a symbol line. And what you've got to do is you've just got to know it all. So on the video itself, on the YouTube channel itself, it's got knowledge tests that are filled in, and then it's also got knowledge tests that are blank. And so what you do is you fill it in on a piece of paper. And if you've got the printed version, you fill it on on a printed version. And then what you do, you go to the blank one and you test yourself. So you go to question number one and you say, blah, 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 whatever it actually says, you write down your answers. Then you do question two and go all the way through. And then what you do is you check it. Anything you got wrong, repeat it. OK, because you've just got to keep repeating it all the time. And what you've then got is you've got that knowledge in your head. The hard part then later comes using that knowledge. Keywords, particularly in biology, um, people say that there's more new words and new language in science than there is in maybe even an MFL language that you speak in school. I don't know whether that's true or not, right? Uh, but if you look at this here, aerob aerobic, anaerobic, respiration, can't even read my own writing there. Limiting oxygen debt, photosynthesis, metabolism. It's all words that are not kind of commonly used. Um, but again, at the end of each one of the knowledge tests, there's a list of the most important keywords. And you've got to know them. Because if you want to get the best exam results, what you've got to do is you've got to use the right words. You can't write 
breathing, right, when it isn't, and it's aerobic respiration, because you just don't get the marks for it. So keywords are also absolutely vital. Mind maps, uh, there's different ways of learning. Again, on the channel itself, what there is, there's a set of mind maps for all of the kind of key stage four units. Um, and what they've done on them is I've kind of just done the briefest information around the outside. And the idea then that each one of these individual little bubbles here feeds into part of your knowledge test. Kind of, so it's kind of like an opening gambit. Skills. Skills is, again, it's something that you've got to be able to do. It's skills, it's things like knowing what apparatus is for, being able to write a method, understanding about variables, um, understanding how to draw a graph and how to interpret a graph. Uh, and again, on the channel, what there is, there's loads and loads of different questions, right, based on physics equations, right, which is kind of part of the skills process. Exam question decoding. Now, this is the final part of it, really. The final part of it is you've got all that knowledge in your head. You know exactly what you're doing. You know all the keywords. You've then got to look at the question. You've got to understand it. Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm building up um, a kind of a, a series or as many past exam questions or exam papers as I can do. Um, and what I've done is I've put the blank exam on for you to have a go at. Just write down your answers onto a piece of paper. And then the second part of it then is a walkthrough where what I'll do is I'll do my train of thought. Uh, and there's a few other people on there as well that are helping me out with this, right? Just to get the train of thought to understand where the actual answers have come from. Uh, and then that's called decoding. Um, it's things like uh, if you're doing electrolysis and it says, what are your observations? You don't say any science. You just say, there's bubbles at the cathode. There's bubbles at the anode. There's an orange substance, an orange metal appears you know, they're the kind of the words where you could easily lose marks by not just kind of reading the question. And I always call that exam question decoding. Uh, rewards. Um, the reward, ultimately, at the end of the day, is um, GCSE results that are really good. OK, but I do like above and beyond. Right. Um, and I kind of call it a reward in a way. And it's almost like extra difficult questions that don't necessarily have a difficult answer, but it's understanding the question. And I call these above and beyond. Uh, and for people that then do these, right, that I'm kind of associated with, what they'll do is they'll get rewards, right? And obviously chocolate is obviously the best reward. Um, but above and beyond gives you that extra challenge, and that is then pushing you towards your top grades. Now, this then goes back to the channel itself. Uh, you just go on YouTube and you just type in Mr. Leak Science and you look for that. All right. And then what you do is you subscribe. You don't need to turn the notifications on because you're not going to be interested about whether a new video appears or whatever it is. Um, but just have a look through and understand exactly where you're going to be. Um, there's loads of revision resources on there. There's loads of information. There's revision timetables potentially on there as well. So just look at it. Understand the actual website itself or the YouTube channel and then subscribe. Understand and then subscribe. Uh, and what you'll do is then you'll do better in your science. I have no doubts.